You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey everybody, I'm Sammy and I'm here today with Anna Crespo. Hi Anna, how are you? Hi Sammy, I'm fine, how are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm so excited to be talking to you. As you know, I love talking to authors and you're totally an awesome author. So <laughs> really excited. So Anna, to start out, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? Sure. So I am originally from Rio de Janeiro, which is in the southeast coast of Brazil. And I imagine you might have some ancestors from there as well. I do. Um, I'm sure I do. <laughs> so I um, moved to the United States, to Ohio, actually, to go to graduate school. And then when I was done with graduate school, my husband decided that he wanted to continue his studies. And that's when we moved to Indiana. So we lived in Bloomington first. Um, and my daughter at the time was just a year old. And we used to visit the Monroe County Public Library almost every day. Oh, I love that. That's yes. a great library. It is a great library. We used to borrow a lot of toys and books, of course. And I remember sitting down in the library with her and reading board books and learning new words with her. I still remember learning the word shovel from one of those um, baby books, like first words or something. Um, yeah, so it was such a fun time. And then we moved to Columbus, where I worked as an academic advisor for a little while. Um, and we still visit, we try to visit Indiana every year. But once my husband graduated, then we went where the job was, which is here in Colorado, which is why we moved out of Indiana. But like I said, we try to visit every year. We really enjoy it there. Oh, I love that. That's so great. So Anna, I have one of your books here, The Sock Thief, and you've got yes. one behind you that I know you're going to tell us about later. But can you tell us a little bit more about your work and the kinds of things that you do as an author? Yeah, sure. So I, um, I am a children's writer. I have uh, a few picture books published, but that's not all I write. Uh, I also write um, chapter books and board books. And I also have two YA started, but never finished. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're always trying to uh, uh, write up, you know, in different genres and, and age groups, I guess. Um, but the ones that I uh, have published are all picture books. And um, I think, I mean, really inspiration comes from everywhere, but uh, I think most of my inspiration comes from nature related things and also um, my, my, you know, my country, the, the country where I was born, Brazil. And, um, and so, yes, yeah, my culture and things like that. I love in The Sock Thief how they do talk about soccer and how important that soccer ball is and how the whole community really bands together to help the children have one. I think that's so fun. Thank you. Yes. And I, what I really like about that book, too, is the how the animals speak Portuguese, right? Because that yes. is something that I didn't realize until I had my daughter when I read on books like that a dog that makes woof woof. And that's not how I had learned, of course, in a different language. And so um, so that was a, something that I didn't expect. Yes, that's really fun. So what do what do birds say in Portuguese? Because in um, English, they would say like chirp, chirp, or they might say, uh, well, for example, a rooster would say cockadoodle do. But mm -hmm. what do they say in Portuguese? In Portuguese, a rooster says um, cocoricó. Huh? Yeah, cocoricó. And uh, a bird would say uh, pew, 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 oh! pew. That's like in Star Wars, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I love it. Okay, so Anna, where are you now in your creative journey, and where do you hope to be someday? So, you know, like, this is such a hard question because I never think so much about where I am in my creative journey. Um, one thing that I think that is different from when I started is that uh, I am – more confident about myself and more confident about my voice. And so I, I think that overall, I am not necessarily trying to please anybody. Um, 
because I think when we start, we at least with me, what happened was that I tried to write books that I thought were more marketable. Um, and those books just weren't me and they never sold. Um, so, so then once I started writing more, like really trying to find my voice, that's when my book started to sell. And so I am more confident about um, who I am and I am not trying to please the market. Of course, I'm still trying to please the readers. I hope readers will love the books and uh, editors as well and etc. But I am not, I, but I do understand that some people might not. It's all a matter of taste. And I am trying just to, to really capture my voice and not trying to write for the market per se. I love that. It's almost like you have to find that right balance, right? Mm -hmm. Between like what you kind of want to do as a writer and what editors are looking for and, mm -hmm. and really what your readers want to write. That's, I love that though, that you really feel like when you write from your heart, you, you do better in the market as well. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's more emotion, I think, to the books when we are writing from our hearts for sure. And so, so yes. Now where I want to be, I, I just, I just hope that I am never, that I'm always moving forward, that this journey never ends, that the writing is always evolving, that the voice is always evolving, but there is no place in particular that, uh, I, I hope to be, I just hope to continue moving forward. Right. Because I mean, like if you have a job where you work in a bank, say you could stop working in that bank and then you wouldn't be a bank worker anymore. But for <laughs> an author, you kind of always want to be an author, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that is true. Mm -hmm. There are so, always ideas coming to mind. I love that. So Anna, I know, and you know that we're all living through a pandemic right now. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing with it? And do you have any advice for other people? Um, I don't know if I have advice, um, but uh, I can say how things have been for us. Um, and it's, it, it was very hard in the beginning when I have uh, two kids, the, the daughter that I mentioned that uh, uh, I read to in Bloomington, um, she's actually in college right now. So it's been yeah so she just moved to college she's a freshman and so that was a little hard to adjust to you know having a daughter in college um during a pandemic um and then i also have an 11 year old and he you know as you can imagine had to stop uh, um and so did my daughter because she was still a senior last year um had to stop school sort of like in the middle of the year and come home and it was really hard to adjust. Um, but since then, I think we've gotten more used to the situation and uh, especially for my son, I think the, the online opportunity has, has, really, has really been good for him. Um, he has a little bit of a hard time in certain subjects and so but he's really good at others and so it allows him to manage his time better and do things a little quicker on one subject but then spend more time on another and uh even like with his art um he has been he has had time to actually sit down and do his art while when he was at school he could never finish anything because it took him longer than the time allotted for him to to do his artwork and so there's been some advantages to online school even though it's you know it's still like we miss the the social aspect of school and uh, I miss also the fact that uh, now it's harder to write because he asks questions as he should, right? But, uh, but I don't have the same time to sit down and write and, and read my manuscripts aloud like I usually do. Um, so it's been hard um, professionally wise. It's been a little hard for me, but Otherwise, uh, things are better than it was in the beginning. But we all want life to go back to normal. <laughs> I know, I know. And, you know, I think the challenges that you talk about are, you know, things that I've heard about from other folks. But I do like that your son has been able to find a little bit of a better balance, maybe. And 
um, to see the online learning as an opportunity, you know, mm -hmm. I always try to tell children that are having a hard time going to school because we know we've been there, right? Mm -hmm. I always try to remind children that it's really a privilege to go to school and to learn. So, you know, but they don't, they get tired of hearing that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so Anna, I always like to invite my authors to share a little something. Do you have something you want to share with us today? Yes, I sure do. So uh, I have this new book coming out. It's so cute. Thank you. It's called Lee and Louise, Who Has More? It is published by Charles Bridge and illustrated by Giovanna Medeiros, who is also Brazilian. Oh, I love and it. Yeah, and uh, so that was fun. It was the first time that uh, a Brazilian illustrated one of my books. Um, and so anyway, so the book is about twins, Brazilian Americans, Lee and Louise, who uh, argue about, about, about who has more snacks. <laughs> so they measure their very Brazilian snacks, biscoito de povilho and coxinha de galinha. They measure them in all different ways. They measure heights, they count how many biscuits they have, how many croquettes they have. They compare it in many ways until they can finally find us a, a, a way to answer the question, which is, okay, who has more? Um, and, so, and so the book is part of this series called uh, Storytelling Math. It's a new series. Um, like I said, uh, um, published by Charles Bridge. And uh, so, uh, the Lee and Louise is one of the first books. And basically what the series is trying to accomplish, the, the series is celebrating diversity, math, and the power of storytelling. And so really the goal is for kids everywhere to see themselves as mathematical thinkers um, because you probably have heard this before, Sammy. Uh, even adults sometimes will say, I can't do math. Yep. Right? Yep. It's such a, 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 um, a state of mind, something that we put in our minds that we cannot do it. But when, when really math is all around us, when every day we're doing math. And Lee and Louise are doing math by arguing who has more, but there are so many other situations in which we are doing math. And so part of the goal of the series is to make sure that kids understand that math is all around us, that we are all mathematical thinkers, and to prevent them from putting this little bug in their heads that say, says, uh, I can't do math, because they can everybody can oh i love that so much you've got math and storytelling and diversity and those are like three wonderful things all wrapped up into one picture book mm -hmm. oh i can't wait to see the whole rest of the series i know that so many children's librarians love trying to find great math books and this one sounds really fantastic oh i'm really excited about it thank you thank you so much so are we we are very excited about this series um, the other book, the other picture book that is coming out with this one is written by Sarah Levine, and uh, it's called The Animals Would Not Go to Sleep, and, um, and then there are some board books as well, which are written and illustrated by Grace Lynn. And so, um, yeah, so we are all very excited about the series and about the opportunity of uh, of uh, showing kids that, uh, that yes, that we are all mathematical thinkers, that math is all around us, and that uh, everybody can do math. Oh, I love that. Well, Anna, this has been so delightful. Thank you so much for the interview. I hope that you and yours have a great day in Colorado, and thanks Thank for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. It was great to meet you. Oh, great meeting you. This is your favorite Hoosier Toucan, encouraging you all to read local. So long.